So I, Anthony and I have been, uh, we've done this a couple times now in the neighborhoods that we, that we share, because um, his, his district is, is overlaps over, over half of my district now. And so we, we try to do these every once in a while to, to give people an opportunity um, to, uh, you know, outside of an election period, to give people an opportunity to discuss issues that, that they feel are important to them, uh, whether it be legislative or, or otherwise community issues. Um, and so we wanted to, uh, you know, do this tonight at the Nazaro Center. Hopefully we, we have some good discussion. Uh, and of course, you know, we can always talk offline later if there's something that you wanted to approach us about, but not maybe not feel comfortable necessarily on camera doing. Uh, by all means, you, you know, you can do that. And, and, you know, for me, one of the reasons why uh, I was so into doing this when Anthony actually approached me with this, with doing these types of things, was when I ran a couple years ago, uh, you know, accessibility was to me one of the things I really wanted to run off of and allow people to have the accessibility to talk to their rep anytime they possibly could. And, I, and seeing the, the faces in the room right now, I, I do see many of you all the time. But I know Anthony shares that as well. Uh, he wants to be as accessible as possible and make sure that people know their senator and know who they, um, you know, who they're, uh, who's, who's representing them in the, in the Senate uh, and on issues that are important to them across the state. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce Anthony Pepperselli. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you for coming. Uh, I know it's a, it's a pretty small crowd and this is kind of a tough time to be, uh, to be doing events. There's a lot going on. You know, the ha Halloween's coming up, the Red Sox are in the World Series, so to make sure we'll finish before, you know, good, good time. Yeah, but even before, we want to make sure we don't, you know, we, we, we make mistakes sometimes, but the one mistake we don't make is getting in between people and food or people and the Red Sox in the World Series when, when we have an event like this. So we'll be kind of quick. But as Aaron mentioned, I like to do these things uh, in the spring. Uh, yeah, I did little town hall meetings in Revere, Winthrop, and East Boston, part of my district, and now in the fall we're doing them uh, in the rest of my district in Boston, the North End, uh, uh, Bay Village, Chinatown, and the like, and, and Cambridge. Uh, and it's a real good opportunity for me to hear from people, more, more importantly, uh, for us to be able to talk about a couple of things that we've worked on in this first half of the legislative session uh, so far and what might be coming up uh, in the next half of the legislative session. So. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll talk maybe for a couple minutes Aaron, uh, about, you know, a couple of things we've worked on together. Uh, transportation finance reform uh, is a pretty big deal for people who live in, in uh, town and in, in my district because of the MBTA and the need for uh, revenue uh, for the MBTA uh, to avoid uh, increases in fares that had been proposed by the MBTA board. Uh, we were able to, hello? We were, we were able to come up with a, a revenue package that we believe uh, will address uh, a lot of the needs from a capital construction standpoint for projects that the administration needs to uh, advance. Uh, but also uh, avoid fare increases that might have been, um, you know, a little too high for people to handle. Uh, and so we're pleased that we've been, we were able to advance that uh, piece of it. Um, uh, welfare reform uh, is a piece of legislation that my colleagues and I in the Senate worked on uh, in the first half of the session. I believe the, uh, Aaron and his colleagues in the House will be taking it up sometime this fall. Um, you know, it, it, it gets a lot of attention, the so-called EBT uh, fraud issues. Uh, you know, we looked at the issue um, more comprehensively and came up with um, a lot of issues to address uh, not only fraud, but helping people uh, get back on their feet, maybe restructuring some of the training programs uh, that might help people uh, get a job rather than be on uh, cash assistance. Um, the photo identification component of an EBT card we actually did in, in, a, in the budget, and so that was an issue that was getting a lot of headlines. But I would strongly suggest it's not necessarily the, the main component. It just kind of gets a lot of headlines um, uh, politically and from a media standpoint. Uh, but there was a lot more uh, to trying to go after at some of the inefficiencies uh, in the transitional assistance system. We believe we've addressed that in legislation and I believe the House will be taken up sometime uh, from a couple, couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, 
I'm not sure like I'm rambling. You want to jump in? Say anything? Oh, um, no, I mean, I think, uh, like Anthony said, you know, the transportation finance reform was, was probably the, the, the issue that took up uh, the first five, six months of our session, really, the oxygen in the room, as, as one person called it. Uh, it took up a lot of the oxygen in the room. It was something that we dealt with uh, firsthand. Uh, went back and forth on, on revenue packages and uh, eventually landed on one that we were able to uh, um, so, uh, feel was sufficient in terms of building uh, a system long-term that we need uh, to uh, to be sustainable and uh, and be efficient in our in, you know especially for for us that, that take the tea every day uh, you know there's the, uh, you know the people in Western Mass or, or in Central Mass don't necessarily have uh, those types of issues necessarily with the MBTA like we do in downtown Boston for instance because uh, you know it's something that we live with every single day we not not you know most of us aren't reliant on our cars uh, but uh, unlike you know 495 or or even further out west where you know uh, uh, the the gas tax is something that was uh, more tangible for them on a regular basis. Uh, and so that, that was something that really took a lot of discussion, took a lot of time and energy to finally get to a point where we had a revenue package that we could, we could feel comfortable uh, supporting and getting behind. Um, what I've been, one of the things I've been working on over the last couple months uh, is that uh, the Public Service Committee, I've been I was named the chair of the Public Service Committee by uh, Speaker DeLeo, and uh, that's been a very uh, exhausting and, and busy committee uh, in terms of the amount of work that takes place. Uh, there's uh, almost 500 bills that come through that committee, uh, and it's probably the second most uh, busiest committee outside of maybe Ways and Means. Maybe, well, financial maybe, services. No, I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll bet you another, I'll bet you another stake that that's wrong. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, judiciary might be one that actually has just as, 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 is just as busy. But it is one of the busier committees, you know, in, in the in the in the house and in the in the, in the state house, excuse me. Uh, and so, but one of the bigger bills that has been that has been talked about has been this pension and, and health care reform bill. Uh, we're actually having a hearing on it on Thursday, and it was it was uh, based off of a commission that was uh, that met a couple of years ago, last two years or whatever they met, and they finally came out with a report that would change some of the, the pension situation and some of the healthcare tier situations for public service employees. Uh, and the governor filed that bill back in, back in February, March. Uh, we are having the hearing on it on Thursday. Changes the vesting for public employees from 10 years to 20 years. Uh, changes the healthcare tiers. Uh, makes it, makes it um, uh, allows the cities and towns a little more flexibility in terms of their ability to uh, uh, pay less on premiums. Uh, for, for public service employees, and it, cha it changes potential future pension um, uh, percentages that you would gain over, you know, depending on the amount of the years that you serve uh, the public. Uh, it's a huge bill uh, with, a, with a lot of uh, interested parties. Uh, everybody that's ever, ever worked in the public service, uh, or public sector has, has, I feel like has reached out to me over the last couple of months asking, my, asking or wanting to voice their opinion. Uh, and it is so. It's something that's kind of taken up a lot of the energy uh, legislatively for me over the last, uh, you know, so far throughout the summer and into the fall. Uh, and um, not to say that after we have the hearing on Thursday that we're going to have all the answers or, or have a final final situation, but it's something that we're we're going back and forth with uh, at the moment, uh, and we will continue to do so, you know, over the next couple months. Uh, so one of the, the committee I chair is financial services, um, and the last session. Hello. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, that's fine. Thank you for coming. Uh, we produced a couple of significant bills. One, uh, a loan modification uh, slash foreclosure prevention bill that uh, has been pretty effective. The uh, Attorney General's office uh, administers that, and uh, we've seen that it's been pretty effective. Uh, and we've also, you know, been saying the market has led to a lot of uh, declines in the foreclosure starts as well in Massachusetts, and so it's, it's been a good sign from an economic recovery standpoint. Um, but we're working on, uh, you know, a bunch of bills in, in financial services. One uh, that we're, we're looking at uh, is ATM safety. Uh, there was a horrible uh, murder, uh, the young woman in South Boston. Uh, Amy Lord, I believe was her name. And so uh, one of our colleagues uh, refiled uh, a new draft of an ATM safety bill that comes before our committee. We're trying to uh, put together a variety of stakeholders from at least from a security standpoint. I'm not a security expert. So we're trying to understand more about uh, what are some of the uh, technological changes that might be able to be made 
uh, at our ATMs in Massachusetts that might be able to prevent something um, crazy to happen like that with that young woman. So, um, yeah. Now, another piece of legislation that we've both been involved in uh, over the last uh, two years. Uh, and I think Anthony's actually been involved in a lot longer, but I got more involved in it last year because I was the election laws chair at the time, is election reform uh, bills. Um, there's been a number of proposals that's been put on the table, uh, ranging from online registration to early voting to uh, pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds to election audits. Uh, and, and that is something that I foresee uh, potentially uh, both the House and Senate taking up uh, in the second half of the, of the session. Uh, to what degree, not 100% sure exactly what the pieces to that puzzle are going to be, um, but uh, stuff that we've, that we've worked on, and, and at least in the House we've passed uh, pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds, we've passed election audits. Uh, now the new bill that's been proposed has things of early voting and online registration, things that I, that I personally support uh, and, and would like to see move forward. Uh, depending on how that actually is implement, impl implemented and finalized is another story, and I don't think we, we know that at the time, but that's something that has gotten a lot of attention most recently and uh, will get a lot of attention from, especially from activists who are uh, dealing with this, like the, uh, the mass votes of the world and people like that. Um, I actually failed, uh, I forgot to, to start the proper way, and that is to introduce uh, my newest legislative aide uh, here to my, to my right, uh, Packy, uh, Patrick, I keep calling him Packy, the world. Patrick Lyons. Uh, Patrick is a, uh, a lifelong North End resident um, and someone who I've known uh, since he was a kid. Uh, also, uh, Maria Popolo, who used to work for me, upgraded and now works for Anthony uh, and uh, is doing well. And obviously, of course, uh, everyone knows Blake Weber, uh, my chief of staff, uh, who's been uh, with me since I got elected in 2009. I'm glad so. you finally recognized it was an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to some degree, it was an upgrade. Um, does anyone have any questions or if anything they want to jump in on, try to stop us from talking? Maybe. Yeah, we want this to be more of a back and forth than yeah. just us talking. You know what's on your minds that's important for us to, to hear? You know? well, my name is Tony Gelati, and um, I'm here as a lifelong resident and also business owner. I also mm -hmm. vice president of the Chamber of Commerce and sit on the North and Waterfront Council. But basically, I'm here as a resident. Um, would you mind if I take I know you're here from the state and you have busy schedules, but do you mind if I take it down to a local level? Um, we have a serious problem in this neighborhood with trash, as Aaron knows, he, he also lives here. Um, I attended um, a pathetic volume, I say, um, meeting on, on October 22nd up at City Hall. I was very disappointed with the, uh, the number of people that, that actually showed up to voice their opinion. Um, the consensus in the room is that everybody is fed up with the trash, the rodents, the, the trash pickers, the, the trash in, in the gutter. I mean, it, ju it just goes on and on. It's endless. Um, and what I did was I started a petition, and I know that the subject had been um, criticized in years past, but I started a petition that we never have trash on the street overnight ever. And I think that part of the problem that um, there was a lot of criticism last time was that uh, we weren't in the middle of negotiating our city contract with the, the trash handles. But now we are. So we are in a very unique position to be able to negotiate the times as well for pickup, trash pickup. And I can't speak for any other neighborhood except for this neighborhood and the surrounding areas in that it is vital and, and it is so important to the public health and safety that we get the trash off the street. And I'm proposing that we have a 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. drop off only and that the trash start to be picked up after 9 a.m. And if that's at all possible, um, I'm gonna try and get over a thousand signatures. I'm gonna hit every poll in this neighborhood on November 5th and see what we can do. Pass it off to Sal Lamatina, who is uh, very on board with this, and um, see, see if we can negotiate this as part of the contract. My name is Ron Suffers. Talking about related to trash, what's the status of the State House relative to increasing the deposit for bottles and cans? Okay, a lot of people you know, pick up, you know, if they get a nickel. And maybe people would return bottles and cans by themselves 
was a dime or even higher. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I support the bottle bill, so called, the new the new uh, variation of it. And it's been five cents for more than twenty five years. Right? Yeah, so I don't know if they, see there's, the 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 bill that's been filed. It's 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 passed one branch um, the last couple of sessions, but it hasn't passed another branch. <laughs> Not because of you. I'm just saying. Um, the the and that bill would expand. Uh, to expand the bottle bill from 1983 to include bottled water and energy drinks, right? I don't think it actually increases the deposit on what is currently, uh, you know, a can of Pepsi, right? So, but it would it would expand the bottle bill to cover uh, water and, and energy drinks. That, that's only going to cause you know more more pickers throughout the street. That that's yeah. been that's been, and I, and I support the bottle bill. But, that is but that's never been that proposed. The new, the, what you just mentioned uh, is the first I've heard of anyone saying increase the deposit. I mean, many other states have 10 cents or more. Yeah, yeah. That, that's But what you're talking about with the pickers, that's one thing that I've been told uh, from some of the people in, in, in this neighborhood that, that have told me they don't like the bottle bill necessarily. A lot of people, most people do like the bottle bill. Yeah. But for some people that have told me they don't like the bottle bill, the, their, their main reason is because they're afraid that there'll be more pickers and more people opening up the bags and leaving them open, uh, in, you know, throughout the night and creating more of a havoc or more of an opportunity but for maybe, rodents. Maybe many families would return the balls on their own <laughs> yeah. instead of throwing it out to the trash. You know, ten balls would be a pocket ball. Well, I think, and, and as Tony pointed, or upon, <coughs> this is actually a very interesting and important time in or, in, in regard to trash uh, issues in our neighborhood because of the fact that. Uh, the city is negotiating new contracts to start uh, January 2014. We actually have an opportunity at this point in time right now to really start talking uh, with the city in an open dialogue. And I, and I agree with you. I wish there was more people there at the meeting, but I was happy that the fact that there was the people that were there, that there was about 50-some-odd people. I was, I was there, Councilor Lamatino was as well, uh, to talk about you know, what, what we want to see going forward in the next, in the next um, contract. Uh, and, and, and one thing that I would like to see more of, uh, outside of maybe the changing of the hours, and, and, I, and I, I leave that open to a discussion to the neighborhood. I personally tip, put my trash out in the morning as much as I possibly can out of respect for the fact of keeping trash off the street. I know that that is not as convenient for others, and we've had, we've had, we've had those meetings before, and they have been contentious uh, back and forth between people saying that they would like to see six to nine. Some people maybe don't, not necessarily want to see it just limited to six to nine. Uh, but there is, a, I think there is an opportunity for us to talk about more recycling, and I think that there should be, an, uh, should be a, maybe a, a discussion about if you, maybe adding a, a recycling day in terms of what's going on uh, in this neighborhood. Um, I know that I don't think any other neighborhood has more than one recycling day, but maybe we can be used as a, as a, as a, as a pilot or as a test case in terms of having two recycling, uh, two recycling days, because I think, it's, I think it's because of the fact that we're so compact, you know, we, we, deal with, we deal with the trash issues more than basically any other neighborhood. And to have a second recycling day, I think would would maybe you know uh, 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 lessen that issue that you're that you're talking about, uh, and and promote more and promote more uh, recycling, promote people to have more an opportunity to recycle more than just one day a week. On, on that point, though, it's pre it's pretty controversial uh, amongst our colleagues. Uh, the the even the added component to have water or energy drinks included. It's it's always been a pretty controversial. Some people view it as a pocketbook issue that even though it is a deposit and you get your money back if you return, uh, some people view it that it's a tax, which it's not. Um, but that's why it's really had trouble uh, getting through the whole process and becoming law. And yeah, I, I don't have any confidence that in this session that that'll change. Just trying to be frank with you on the prospects of it. Uh, I believe the governor is probably for it. I, I, think, wanna, he I think he is. I think he is. Yeah. So, uh, coming from the House, where there, it hasn't been, you know, like Anthony said, it's passed the Senate. It hasn't yeah, passed yeah, the House. Senate. I know you were very nice. I appreciate <laughs> that. But it has passed the Senate. It hasn't passed the House. I think one of the concerns from from leadership that they hear from the, from the members of the House mm -hmm. is the fact that uh, there are a lot of small business owners that do not that that so worry about. The, you know the additional tax put on you know some of the or what they deem as a tax or an additional revenue that's put on these uh, with water water and and, um, and energy drinks. Uh, they deem that as making it harder or more hard you know harder for them to do business and to and to make a profit off of you know in, in this economy. So that is that that message has resonated with amongst many members of the house uh, uh, who you know who have small businesses in their district. I, I personally 
um, have supported the bottle bill and continue to support the, support the bottle bill. Um, and uh, but we'll see what we'll see what happens the rest of this session. Sandy, did you have a question? I'm sorry. No, getting back to the thinking of doing two days recycling. First of all, again, we got to go through that same story again. That people are not following the rules. On my street alone, if you walk by there every morning, on recycling day, they are not putting it in clear plastic bags. They have it out all over the place, so that when anybody, when the guy comes and picks up the trash, it's flown all over the street because it's recycling is not being put in plastic bags. We've got to emphasize that, Phil. Maybe put a big flyer. I was getting ready to go put signs on the people in my street, their buildings, because I'm getting sick of seeing it. They're coming out with the uh, Trader Joe's shopping bags. They're putting these, their bottles on. And so all that stuff, my street, forget it, is the, the windiest street in, in the whole city. And that stuff flies all over from the bag. So recycling two days ain't going to solve the problem of the trash. No, it's not. I'm and not. six, <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning is not going to solve it either of the rats because you're going to still have the business people with their trash at night. Mm -hmm. So why should they keep their trash out night and I have to worry about getting out and having my tenants put it out at nine o'clock in the morning? And furthermore, my street is a very busy, uh, historic street. You can start from eight o'clock to eight thirty in the morning. I have tourists there all the time. So. I don't think they would like to see that, the trash all, like for some reason this morning, I don't know if they were trying to test us, they didn't come this morning until after nine o'clock. So I said to my husband, I said, oh, you think they're trying to test us to see if we like the after nine? I said, they're lucky there was no tourists on our streets. So I'm against it, I'm against it. Uh, Tom Chiboni, this is a question uh, for Anthony, uh, because Aaron, you might not be aware of this, in the mid-90s, uh, a young man, a company named Menino, when visited uh, the North End to look at the vacant Michelangelo Middle School, yeah. and a group of us from Cox Hill had asked the mayor to please consider s setting aside uh, a certain amount of square footage so that there could be a visitor center that could have restrooms, but not just public lavatories. It could be a visitor center that could be used uh, maybe to employ some of the seniors, some of the kids as far as helping to run it. Uh, at nighttime could be used for meetings like this because there's 2,000 square feet. Uh, and the city of Boston, in fact, made that a precondition for the RFP that was bid. Some people wanted to turn it into a hotel or a Suffolk dormitory. It, as you know, it turned into elder housing and also programming for the elderly. Um, Anthony accompanied the, the mayor. I, I, no, think, I got that. I was a young man at the time. <laughs> and, I remember and, that. And as a matter of fact, Michael Aquilino's daughter, who was three, Angelica, the mayor came in and she was upstairs and Michael was proud of his daughter. And the mayor stood at the bottom of the stairs and said, Angelica, this is the mayor of Boston. Come down and say hello. She said, I don't want to. She was yelling at him. So uh, that was Michael's mom and the son. Uh, we've had, as you know, you've, you've seen the letters uh, in the North End uh, Waterfront.com. Uh, uh, you've heard some of the constituents, and this is a lot of your constituents and stakeholders, the Freedom Trail sites, ABCD, East Boston Development Corporation, all the people we know, Nina and Steve Ayers and Peter Scalaro and uh, Leah. Uh, I wanted to know if, in particular, both of you, but I, the reason why I direct this Aaron towards Anthony was because he was there for the genesis. I mean, you probably weren't born yet. <laughs> I was in high school. Well, the point <laughs> is, would you be... With you? Why well, they not, well what, what I mean, we all know, but there was a line item, uh, and it was going swell for four the, years. The funding had an earmark. Correct. Yeah, it was an earmark yeah. funding. Right. Now, we've been trying to talk about alternatives because if it's a given we're in a poor economy and that yeah. we are not going to use taxpayers money we talked about user fees using the European model having underwriting from a bank having local merchants being able to showcase some of the things I want to know if you're like uh, it's almost like the uncle meeting with the uh, the nieces and nephews would you sponsor a community forum to allow all the stakeholders, the residents, businesses, Freedom Trail sites, agencies, uh, the fraternal societies, the organizations, to talk about a public health issue, and that is the lack of public restrooms, and to use this as an opportunity. It'll be once in a lifetime, because we don't have, in the North End, space to develop things. We have 2,000 beautiful square feet, handicap accessible, that was designed to be a visitor center. 
and we're now going to have maybe a little internecine warfare because agencies that we care about and who are looking for space, and I told Nina and I told Steve this for four or five years, it was irresistible. We knew that the funding was going to run out one day and that we would need an alternative way of funding it. And now other groups are using it, which is fine in a sense. There's nothing wrong with English as a second language and having children learning uh, their piano lessons. But that was a public health issue and, the, and we fought for it. We spent hundreds of hours. And I want to know if you would, I'm not asking for a favor, I'm not asking for you to take sides, but I'm asking for a community forum. Architects of city planners would call it a charrette, a fancy word for let's get everybody together and throw their ideas in. But I think you could maybe serve as a, very, as a facilitator uh, to avoid unnecessary squabbling among your constituents and the, the stakeholders as you use. And I want to know publicly if, if you would be open to the idea sure. of, of uh, yes. facilitating a community forum on that event. Yes. Okay. I appreciate it. I would actually just say uh, yes and, and also point out to the fact, or, or I want to make this point that I just, I, I, I kind of dealt with it firsthand a couple, uh, like less than a month ago. Um, we, we organized uh, the 5K road race uh, from the North End through downtown and back into the North End uh, to benefit the uh, New England Shelter for Homeless Veterans. And uh, we were looking for, we, we were got nervous because leading up to like maybe the last month, we realized we didn't have a place for people to go to the bathroom. If they, you know, runners coming back and not having a place to go, then Amy, Amy helped organize that. Um, and so we scrambled to find a place because obviously we couldn't do it at the, uh, we couldn't have them keep going to the firehouse or whatever because, you know, the firemen, you know, they deal with that all the time. Luckily, we were, we were, we were lucky enough to have Elliot School um, and, and uh, Tracy open up her doors for about, for an hour afterwards to allow so we didn't have that issue. But it, it almost was like crystal, it almost crystallized it for me uh, firsthand in terms of, of, of how difficult it, this actually is the fact that we really have, not that I didn't, I wasn't aware of the issue because we've talked about it many times, but the fact that we don't have much public restroom space in this neighborhood, um, and especially along the Freedom Trail. Uh, I, I and, and I know Anthony would, and I can speak from here, when I when I say we'd be open to any any solution that would make things possible, and I know Council Lamatina is open to discussions as well. Uh, but I think maybe having all the stakeholders in a room is the, is the right way to go, and to, and to maybe hash some, some, out, some of the the nuances or the issues that we have. I'll let it drop, but the, the final word, it, it, it is a public health issue, and it is a source of embarrassment. It's an extreme issue for all of us, but particularly for businesses. I, so I really think, thank you, if, no. if you'll, if you'll we'll follow, follow up. Yep. All right. Thank you. Questions? This is just being puzzled about something you said a couple of minutes ago. How can you make ATMs safer so that the kind of crime that happened in South Boston wouldn't happen? Well, uh, it's been proposed, and I, I don't know if you can make it safer. So we've got legislation before the committee that I chair that people suggest would make it safer. So we're going through the process of reviewing that with security officials. Yeah, some suggest if um, uh, if there was an emergency button to push, right? Something maybe as simple as that. If something pushed, if there was a button that you could push. Uh, Maybe, maybe it would have flagged. Now, this young woman was driven around to four or five different ATMs. Uh, maybe if there wasn't an emergency button. Believe me, the, the banking community has suggested that you can't make it, that they, they have all, you know, they have cameras, they have different uh, precautions in there. You know, some people have even suggested that you have a, uh, a special code. So if, you, if your normal code for your ATM card to withdraw cash is one, two, three, four, maybe, uh, you know, four three two one is your emergency code. That if you type, if that you know, if that woman and there, and there was a technology, uh, you know, in play that allows you to push in a code that you know sent a signal to whoever's monitoring uh, that that in particular uh, ATM machine at that point in time, uh, maybe it would send a, you know a signal out to anyone you know police car at the closest location someone's in uh, an emergency situation ATM. You know, banks have suggested, well, maybe, uh, you know, maybe that would be ineffective from an efficiency standpoint because 
maybe it would accidentally be put in, or the button, if there was something as simple as a button, maybe the button get, would get pushed by accident. But we're looking at this thing pretty closely. Um, it's not something that you hear of often, um, but I know they, they have done some, uh, they have done some things to ATMs in New York State, uh, in New York City that we're looking at to see uh, if it's at least made them safer. Um, again, this was, a, this was a very rare but horrific uh, incident, but if we can make it safer, we'll, we will. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Okay. Can we talk about the, um, the Boston Garden Project, 80 Causeway Street, Lovejoy Wharf, and the construction that's gonna be happening on the Charlestown Bridge? Seems like the time frame for all these projects is between 2014 and 2017. Um, the impact of the Boston Garden, it's gonna be 497 residential units and 306 hotel rooms and construction of 668,000 square feet of office space and 800 parking spots. The construction alone, never mind what happens after, the impact that happens, after all, all is said and done, along with the construction of Lovejoy, which is I think 167 residential units that are now, they were approved for rentals, now it's gonna be approved or coming up for approval for condos. And the, in, in, in conjunction with all that, the construction of the Charlestown Bridge, I mean, we are gonna be completely shut off. There's gonna be absolutely no way to get to any of the roadways that we need to I'm very concerned about elderly getting to the hospital in time. You know, um, straight down Commercial Street, Causeway Street is our only way to Mass General Hospital. By the way, my mother brought that up to me. I didn't even think of that. But the, the rodents during the construction, the pollution, um, and then what happens after it's all done when there's, you know, a thousand more people in the area all going to the same place and, and having to use our roadways, uh, North Washington Street, the Charlestown Bridge, Commercial Street, Causeway Street. And then what happens when there's an event at the garden at the same time that everybody's trying to leave work, come home, trying to get to where they're going, and we're dealing with something that you touched on in the beginning, uh, a, a tea station that is 100 years old that was projected to handle traffic 50 years in advance, which means that it's 50 years behind our time now to handle the traffic and congestion of this city. It's, it's gonna be complete chaos. I mean, you're not gonna be able to walk, you're not gonna be able to drive. I mean, it's just, it's gonna be nuts. How, how is the city, state, and all these agencies planning on controlling all this? I mean, it's, it's really gonna, I, I don't think that anybody is realizing the impact. It, even, even just the construction of the Charlestown Bridge alone will send this this neighborhood into a tailspin, never mind everything else that's gonna happen. It's just, I mean, what are your feelings on this? Well, a couple of points. One, um, the construction of Lovejoy Wharf is ongoing right now. Uh, I, I, I suspect, and, I, and, and, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, it'll be, it'll be completed before the construction of the garden begins. Uh, so there won't, those two projects, to my knowledge, and you know, things could get changed based off delays or whatnot, but to my knowledge, those two projects will not be being, being built at the same time. But the traffic, though. Uh, okay, no, no, yeah, that's, that's one point. The second thing, on the Charlestown Bridge aspect, um, while I agree with you that at, you know, the Charlestown Bridge, uh, whenever they, whenever we do, you're talking about the rebuilding of the Charlestown Bridge or well, the I reconstruction of it. gas lines that are leaking, have been leaking for years. I mean, it's absolutely necessary. That, now, that was, that was, that's the point I, 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 but I it's, think it's, it needs to make. I mean, the fact disrupted. that that middle lane, that those two middle lanes have been closed, since I think since that time you walked you walked around with Michelangelo back then oh. sometime in the mid nineties. Uh, um, you weren't even born. I, I was. I remember going down the middle lane. So <laughs> I don't think I actually actually could drive myself down the middle lane, but I do remember going down the middle lane. Um, and and the fact that those two that you know that that's been shut off for that for 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 like twenty something years now or or almost twenty years now is. Um, you know, and just uh, the, 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 the fact that the bridge is, is really, you know, basically falling apart in front of, in front of our eyes, it, it ha it's, a, it's a necessity that has to get done. Um, but I, I, would, I would suggest and hope that those, that, those, that, that if, if they, when they do the Charlestown Bridge, that, that all the other projects along that, along Causeway Street are, are completed. Um, to your point, yes, it, 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 is, it is a more, it, it'll, it'll become a more congested area, a more, a busier area, uh, especially on game nights and stuff like that. 
but I think the way the structure is set up right now, first off, Causeway Street is, is, is an absolute eyesore. Among, amongst the city, among, and probably, Absolutely. probably, you know, downtown crossing got all the has gotten all the attention over the years about you know what you know how it's fallen apart and this and that. And I think Causeway Street has been very underrated in terms of how what what the activity you know how what it could be and what it is. Um, it is it is it is it is a desolated area. You know, empty storefronts all up and down, uh, they, or rotating storefronts. There's never been anything steady that's happened over there. So to to fix that area up is going to, and you know, that's the that's the centerpiece or or the or the heart of what of fixing that up is going to be that Boston Garden uh, project uh, and construction. So it, it is going to add it is going to add some congestion, and there are some issues that, that are around it. I, I and, and I, we just did a letter. Uh, a, a joint letter on on this on that project where we address some of the concerns that we have. I mean, one for instance is that if they're going to put more restaurants there, in order, you know, if they're going to put more restaurants there for obviously game nights, that they aren't in comp in, in competition necessarily with North End restaurants. <coughs> obviously, not you know the Massimino's, the Filippo's, the people that rely on garden activity. If you're going to go to the North End, you're going to you're going to get a certain meal. In this case, most likely an Italian meal. If you're going to go to the garden. Uh, you're going to stay at the garden. You, you, you get a, it's a different type of meal. You're not looking to get the same type of meal that you would in the North End, so they're not competing for the same clientele. Um, but it, it, it is, it, it is. There is going to be some issues surrounding that. I, I'm not going to hide behind those or doubt that. But the fact that we have to get that area cleaned up, I think, is is takes precedence over everything. And then on top of it, going back to the bridge, the fact that we have to get the bridge fixed, I think, is going to have to get done. The, the, there's, there's absolutely the bridge, uh, the money, and Phil's going to chime in here or not. <laughs> uh, there, there's been discussion about 2015-2016 uh, that funding would be available. Yeah. That, not, that that it wouldn't well, necessarily be when the construction takes place, but funding uh, would be available it, in 2015. It was on the federal register when Capilano was the congressman, mm -hmm. and it just kept getting delayed, and delayed, and delayed. It's not on the federal register. Yeah. If it was, it would say $15 million, which is not 10 yes. times what it would cost to fix that bridge since it was false. But I understand the city has sent their information to the government yeah. to redo it and do the Charlestown Bridge. So it shouldn't happen before that, like you said. Yeah. The only other thing is something we're forgetting here. Before any of those projects get built, there's already 2,500 housing units already there that just got finished. On Canal, yeah. yeah. Right. So there's, there's a lot more traffic right there. Right. It's and some in some of those, and for instance, on Lovejoy Wharf, Lovejoy Wharf is housing, but it's also it's also office space. Converse yes. is going to put their headquarters there. And, and you know that 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 leads to also. I mean, even if it's just a scale back, I mean, one of the buildings that they're proposing is 600 feet high. I mean, that is enormous. That building alone is going to block people's view of the the Zagum Bridge, which you know Boston is now so proud of. And I mean, what is what is all that housing market? Does it have to be 497 units? We already have, I mean, so many units that that are being built there now. That's going to crush our rental market here. I mean, you know, we, we have landlords that that have been in in the North End for 100 years. Their families rely on the income of of their properties to to support themselves. These these properties have been in families for you know generations. And, and this is how these people make their living. They, they're going to crush our real estate market if, if these projects just are let to blow up and, and not scale back in some way, shape, or form. I agree with you 100% that you know these projects have to be done. That you know Causeway Street is a disaster and has been for years, and the Charlestown Bridge and everything. I'm just saying that we need to be considered. The North End needs to be considered. We can't be washed over. We can't turn into another West End that disappears off the map. It just, it can't happen. We're too valuable. We're a very historical neighborhood. We have people of generation after generation. We're a very popular neighborhood. We are one of the, the, the busiest destinations in all of Massachusetts. We just can't be overlooked and we can't be overrun by rodents and pollution and all the problems that are going to happen with, with these one of, projects. One of the reasons why they want to build out there that high, and when I say out there, I mean the West End is because is they can't build here. This is, I mean, because we, we have abided by a 55 foot height, height limit that, is, that has been now since the early to mid 80s, uh, that, that, that you know, any political figure or any, and any developer 
knows that they can't, that, that, or let me say any developer knows they're going to run into opposition from either political figures or from the community immediately, and they don't even propose it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, as the, and you're on the neighborhood council, and I was neighborhood council president when I was there. No, everyone knew not to go in front, and everyone knows not to go in front of Nura asking for anything over 55 feet. It's, it doesn't happen. Sure. And, and it's worked. And so it's kept the neighborhood, while maybe insulated in some ways to what's going on uh, you know, on the peripheral, it's kept the neighborhood um, unique and, and historic and, and, and allowed, you know, allowed um, you know, us to be that, that, that special place that you know, we all love this neighborhood so much. If I may, on, on just when you were talking the Charlestown Bridge, um, I wanted to make a little public service announcement on a couple of projects that might or might not affect you. So the Callahan Tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're all aware of that's going to close in January for a few months. Total closure. Right, so, and all the the Secretary of Transportation is is mindful. I think we've helped them be mindful of some of these issues. There's a not a lot of projects that are going on. Uh, there's a project on one of the Storo Drive tunnels, right? That'll be going on simultaneously. You got the Longfellow project going on, Government and then Government Center, Center uh, is going to close for I believe 18 months. They're going to delay that closure. Uh, we were asking them to consider delaying it. They're going to delay that closure until the Callahan Tunnel project is done, supposed to be done in April. And these are, again, these are, from a government center standpoint, it's a brand new kind of, it's the last blue line t train station, I think, of the modernization uh, component. They, they had to by um, they need to ADA standards, they have to follow ADA standards and, and have a you know, handicap accessibility. Um, and all the green line and blue line stuff, I mean, all the blue line stuff, right? Are, yeah, are almost they, all, they're almost done. Yeah, <coughs> they, they, this is actually the last one because they've basically done it, built it from coming out, going in, and Government Center is the last one that they've done. The Callahan closure is necessary. All the decking underneath the road, you know, we're driving the road, it's just a flat road, right? We think we're in a bubble. Underneath that, you know, it's like it's a bridge, basically, right? That goes down to the bottom of the whatever bubble that is. So at least that's how they explained it to me. I'm not real good with that. So that engineering stuff, but and so they the, the decking has got some corrosion going on. It's it's not something that they can you know afford to wait to do. So they're gonna they're gonna do that project, and then uh, I believe at some point in time in 2015 uh, they have to do similar work to the Sumner Tunnel coming in. So for someone whose daily commute is through the tunnels, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. The Romano said he would be uh, coming back to the community. Romano. Yeah, they've been doing He's good public awareness. Chamber of Commerce. So he's making his one. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be in Winthrop actually yeah. this week for mm -hmm. me. Uh, you know, talking to those folks. So I just wanted to remind me. Yeah, remind just people about getting that. back to these buildings that are being built and these developments. <clears throat> I don't know. I read it in the paper somewhere. Maybe you can explain it better for me because I don't understand. Why are they allowing these tall buildings or all these buildings that are being built? They think they're giving them a break on the far as the parking goes. If you have all those places built and they're not going to have enough parking, we don't have parking here as it is for ourselves. So what's that going to do for us is force the, the people that live here and that pay to park, that of course the, they're going to say, wow, we need, the, we need the parking spaces. So there goes inflation on our parking spaces. Why are they allowing them not to build enough parking spaces? Or is it 1.5? I, I don't understand that. Can you tell me why um, they're allowing them not to build enough? I'll, 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 give you the, I'll give you what I think is the reason. And, and let me preface it by saying I don't know if I agree 100% with it. I, don't, I like the premise, but I don't know if I agree with the implementation necessarily. Um, they're, all these projects are being built along around T stations, basically. You know, government center. I mean, not government center. Haymarket with the government center garage and and North Station with with the uh, with the um, garden project and and Lovejoy Wharf. Uh, their their thought process is that they're trying to build you know more transient oriented like like people that are going to be living there are going to be more transient oriented and and look to take the train more you know. Uh, you know, ride bikes and, and instead of needing to be reliant on a car. Uh, I like that. I want to see. I, I like that they're that they, that's what they're going at. I don't know if necessarily just by forcing the issue, it's going to happen. I, I don't know if that's going to happen, and, and I'm not on the BRA to decide that. And so you know, I mean, or make that final decision. But I don't know if that's just going to you know organically take place. Um, you're right. We we. But I think at a certain point in time, there's going to become. An oversaturation of, or not oversaturation, a, 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 a overwhelming need for, for parking. And where are they going to go? Are they going to go to out? I mean, are they going to go outside the neighborhood? Are they going to go to the brinks? Are they going to go somewhere else? I mean, that's a question that I think uh, uh, it, we're going to have to face. I think down the road, um, they're not going to get residential parking spots. I mean, because they, they, they don't live inside in the north end, 
uh, perimeter. So they're not going to get residential parking spots for the north, and they might get less than residential parking spots. So I don't know how they're handling it or they're, how they're approaching that issue there. But it's it's uh, it's something that is going you know is questionable down the road, and, and it's it, it's kind of a almost an experiment in terms to see whether they can can get you know enough people in these buildings or get you know get get the uh, market there that they need uh, without having the having people or having people that aren't going to rely on a car. So I mean. Oh, I, I, okay. I'll just give it to Dolly. Okay. Um, my question is, with all these big developers <coughs> and these big companies that are coming in, do they contribute any money at all to the communities around them? Anything at all? You know, the community centers, the, anything at all? Do you, do you tell them, like, you know, you need to do this, or we need this, or it's just... No, it's like right oh, so Legally, I cannot do that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, don't you think that there should be something in place, like you want to build, you know, 7,000 apartments down the street. The city has you, a proposal. In every you need to do, built. and my other thing well, we is. We don't see that much. The linkage, so-called, yeah, right? We, we yeah, don't see the linkage, it goes through the. It doesn't the, come the, into yeah. us. Yeah, I don't know what they, it goes to the BRA, right? That was the big thing back when they built the convention center, mm -hmm. right? So they formed the process to make it go through linkage. Um, I'll try to be real, real careful. Yeah, I, I the, the, over time, you know, ethics rules have changed, ethics laws have changed um, on what Aaron and I can or can't do uh, with how we weigh in with, uh, you know, charitable giving even. I mean, we can't advocate for it, um, but there are fine lines we have to be careful with. I think in terms of the linkage money, in terms of the BRA, I think you've heard it from both people that are running from there. I think you're going to see some potential more transparency involved in that, and that might that might not solve the issue in terms of the money being being directed towards towards the community. Or, I mean, it really depends on the project. Because if if if, 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 if you're if you're in an area if you're in an area where you can argue where your community actually lies. Where does the community go? I mean, where's where's the money Just for the, the lighting, community to go? Like walking from here to North Station, like okay, you want to put okay. 700 units, you need to light up that street mm -hmm. so people don't get you know in trouble on that street, like just things like that. And my other question is, um, when are we going to get some type of community center besides the Great Bazaar mm -hmm. here in Boston, in the North End, <coughs> for our kids, for our grandchildren, just for our elderly, there is nowhere in the North End that you can really go and say, okay, you need help with eating, this is what you do. You have to go to this street, you have to go to that street. And I've been in other communities where I've walked in their community center and they have lists. You need eating, <coughs> second floor. Your kids need transportation, first floor. But not in the North End, we don't have that in the North End. And I honestly, the Nazaro Center, I know everybody thinks that, you know, it's a big help, but it's not. It's not. It's not a big help at all. Oh. They, they close the doors, they shut people out, they have their own rules in this place. When are we going to see that change? When can we ask you to help us change that for our kids in the neighborhood? Okay. The visitor spots, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm kind of sick of them. I'm sick of the visitor spots. I'm sick of someone saying to me, well, I'm going to park here because it's a visitor spot. You know, we're getting tagged. I get tagged for parking in a visitor spot. I get tagged. Why can't we get rid of the visitor spots and let them go park in the garages? Like when I go to New York City, I have to park in a garage. I can't park on the street. I think that just changed. I think with the all, tickets, I think it, no, I think like, it just changed with the, we don't get tickets visitor. anymore. I don't no. think they give any more tickets. With the exception of four streets, yeah. you can park in a visitor spot any time, a resident. But there's four streets well, to the center. I don't remember them. The, 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 signs, the, signs, are two hour parking the signs are different. Yeah. The signs are different. There are certain signs that say your residents can park. It means two hour visiting except for residents who can park for as long yeah. as they want. Or, and the, but there's other signs that say that there is strictly two hour parking. I mean, is it a law that we have to have visitors parking? No, it's, in it's, residential it's, area? it's not a law, but it's, in, I'm not arguing. There's, the, 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 uh, Tom Tenlin, the commissioner of BTD, will tell you. And he said it. These, he has said it in this community, community in this room. I was here when he said it. Um, they give out more uh, resident per permit stickers than their actual parking spots in the entire neighborhood. So, 
what does that tell you? That people are going to be fighting for resident parking spots where, you know, where there's too many, it's almost like musical chairs. And eventually someone's not going to be able to find a, a chair and someone's not going to be able to find a spot. Uh, and, and, and there's no way to change that because by, law, by, by the rule, by the city ordinance and by the law, I mean, or it should be, you know, you pay, you, you pay, you pay taxes in the city. Um, you should be able to, if you live here, you should be able to, as long as you show you're a resident, you should be able to uh, right, be able so to park there. But the, pro, the, the difference is, that, and this goes, almost goes back to what, what we're talking about in terms of trying to, trying to keep people, trying to, trying to have, build, build, have people where people aren't relying on their cars. Um, there, isn't enough, there isn't enough parking spots for people that, that actually own cars now. 20 years ago, not ever, I mean, a lot of households might have only had one car. Now they have, not even in, in this neighborhood, now so they have some that have two cars. So the extra visitor spots, I mean. But the best, no, so, so getting, back, spots getting back to that. Could the, give us a little bit more. You're, you're, you're right, and then, and, and the minute the city would do that, and I'm not saying that I agree with this or not, but the minute the city would do that, you'd have the businesses calling up saying, we can't, we have no one that can come into this neighborhood. To, to, to shop at Mike's, to shop at Modern, to shop, to go to restaurants, okay, to go but, to this, but, you know. But, but who lives here? The I, I agree, I agree. Resi not, resi the it's re not the restaurants. It's, it's, a, it's resident, it's not residents first. It's not Mike's Pastry, not Modern Pastry, they all live in Medford and, and wherever. It's an, it's, ongo it's an ongoing balance between between businesses and residents that we that we try to, that we, that we all know, waking up and going to bed in this neighborhood, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, and, it, Finding that balance is, is is forever impossible, but we try. All right. All right. No, you go first. I already asked. I only have a pet peeve. I'm talking about the Greenway. I've been fighting with the Greenway uh, on the mitigation on Castle 12. They put that stupid fence up that was temporary. They put the whatever that it think is on the other side to accommodate all the tourists. I don't know what those panels are, but the, the kind of crazy panels. Oh, they have the pictures on yeah. photographs. I want that. I, I, I want something that's got to be put up on from uh, from Russell Street up to probably Fulton Street. Who cares about parking lot? It doesn't matter. They have vinyl covering for those fences. If they're going to leave that fence, if they're not going to leave that fence, then I want I want to have the parcel 12 uh, uh, exit covered by the mitigation process that they're supposed to do. Yep. They, they put that fence up and they disappeared on us. I talked to John Romano. John gave me the number of the new maintenance chief there. It wouldn't cost more than 10 dollars so right If you can buy the vinyl, if you can pay for the vinyl stuff, I'll have a crew put it up. So we want the slats, just the slats no, no, in the no, no. What do you look at St. Lenny Church? Yeah. See that wall? Yeah. It's a vinyl covering that goes in front of the, the picket fence, uh, the fence, painted. and and you just tie wrap it up. But I don't want flowers and plants and things. I'd like to have some maybe arches like like it. Like arches, arches on the yeah, it looks like brick, stones, big stones and arches. You only have to cover two streets, and and then I could care less if it's behind it. it doesn't matter. But. Uh, it won't cost big money. So aesthetically, you just want it to look, you want yeah, it to look nice. Yeah, like junk. Yeah. Really, it's creepy. Okay. I'll, I mean, I, I, talk, I, I, I don't give me a number on it. I, I talked to the Greenway. They have no number. Not true. Right. I talked to the Armenians Thursday night at the meeting I went to. They had a, uh, a uh, human trafficking thing. It was astronomical in this state and everywhere. No and I, uh, I could go to them because we had that $5 million endowment for their, their property. I made sure that was in the, the agreement we had. So I didn't want to turn it over to the agreement. I want to make sure it stays where it is. But to me, that's the prettiest park down there. So I want to keep it. Castle 13. So Castle 12 is still my eyesore. I see it, and people see it. I mean, there's nothing you can do with it. If you're going to leave it, that's fine. That's at least, and that's, it will cost more than, I don't think, $10,000. And I'll put it up. I'll let people put it up. <laughs> Well, we have two long time people sitting on that board with voting power and suggestion power. On the Greenway. Yeah. Yeah, this is DOT, though. DOT. This is DOT. DOT owns that. Yeah, DOT uh, DOT the Greenway. So the, the, why do you, you have a problem with the Greenway? I went to the Greenway to get the same type, not that panel that's on the other side, trying to get some money out of them to put it on this side. The, con the Conservancy is not in charge. The Conservancy of is not in charge. Of parcel 6, Parcel 12, and Parcel 18. Because those, so have, always been, the those have always been sullied well, and isolated as development parcels. 
Yeah, we can we can look into that. Definitely. That's. I mean, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. But yeah. And also, I'm, I'm on the DRA advisory committee once a month, and you can't imagine the polish of them coming up with on the waterfront area all the way down. And what Marriott wants to do, and what other people want to do, and we're still talking about this traffic blocking issue. So what they say and what they do, you can walk down there anytime you want at five o'clock. You can't go by those streets. You're talking about Atlantic Ave, yeah, Surface Highway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say about the traffic. Um, in terms of the Bullfinch Triangle developments and the garden and government center garage, there there is a there is a better traffic plan uh, that will that will be that'll be implemented in the, in the next couple in the, I think in, within the next year in terms of the streets uh, that that are all being developed uh, and it will make it a little easier to maneuver through. I mean, right now it's a, it's a it's a mess and, and especially on like a garden, especially like at a garden event, it's an absolute mess. I think they'll they'll, they'll they're going to be making it uh, ways that you can get through. And I don't want to. I don't know if it's public yet, so I don't want to. I don't. I, I think they just shared information, like some information in terms of what it might be, or wanted to get some input. But to make it easier to get through uh, that Bullfinch Triangle area, uh, I think is on the way. Uh, so traffic will be a little bit alleviated to some degree. Um, balance that off with the more with the more congestion. Yeah, I had um, a footnote to add to what Tony was talking about before in terms of traffic, and then I have a question that. I hope is state oriented. Um, the footnote is that the new Spalding is now out in Charlestown. So that means that the bridge, it really, you can't close down the bridge. And there's more traffic now going to Spalding. I don't think any planning has been done by the BRA to take into account the fact that all the Spalding is going in that direction now. With all these other issues as well. Yeah. I, I, again, I, we we were just saying we don't know if they're gonna if they would close, close the bridge. The bridge yeah. To be perfectly honest, with you, I'm not I'm not sure how the construction would <coughs> go. You, 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 you can't close. You can't close. You can't close. Right. You can't close the bridge. Right. You can't exactly. close the half of it. Yeah. 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 New England to use Spalding. Um, my bigger question is that can the state do anything to um, change the design of the TD Garden project and some of these other projects that are grossly high, that don't take the neighborhoods into consideration? Of the highest tower, 600 um, feet. it's 600 feet, and the Zakums do, if I recall correctly. So we're going to have a tower. It's really got five parts to it. It's almost five towers stuck together right next to the Zakum. That's going to be three times as high as it is. It's going to block the view of Bunker Hill from the north. It's going to block, block the view of the Zakum from many angles. But the, the it's just, it's, it's a project that's been conceived without any um, sensitivity to the place where it's being put. It's been conceived to make a whole lot of money and squeeze a whole lot of people into a little space. Is there anything that can be done at the state level? Because you know, here in these meetings, we try to work with the city, but working with the BRA is, I mean, it's, it's, it's irresponsible what they're allowing to happen. Is there anything the state can do to look at this project? Well, tech. I mean, I don't, know. I don't believe I don't believe the state does have a role in it. It's a it's a yeah, municipal right. process with the zoning board of appeals for the city of Austin. Probably at some point, right? BRA yeah. large project review article eighty process, but it's not it's not a a state function to oversee a development project like that. That was zoned. That has been zoned for that height since the day they took the uh, the original garden down. Um, in the mid '90s. So they told us. Yeah. No. No. I mean, I, 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 I always. They rezoned it, it when they did the original. Project. When they, when they, when they did the original garden, when they, when they took down the original garden and did the new garden, uh, from '93 to '95 or whatever it was, they zoned, they, they zoned that, that property, uh, for whatever 600 feet is. If, I think if that's what you're saying. Yeah. The Zakum wasn't for. Well, the, the Zakum <laughs> planning was done by then. 
Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, because the Zaycom planning yeah. had been done in the 80s. 80s. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, there there was an understanding. I guess no, that's I a, young, someone. Yeah, right. <laughs> someone was there saying at some point in time saying that yes, this this project or this this place would be or this this area would be zoned for higher than the actual Zaycom would be would be. Um, in and so the state has no control over that. So does it have control over any of the other projects going up there? I think there are ten of them surrounding. The north all, end right now. No, yeah. all city, yeah. and so it all comes under the RA. In reality, the only thing that in, in was the is parcel nine with the uh, uh, parcel nine. Parcel nine, nine. Parcel nine uh, uh, is a state is a state land or a state land being being sold to to a developer or leased to a developer, um, and and then the T then the T in fact the T substations that themselves are actually you know obviously being built upon. So there is there is that discussion, but outside of. The zoning issue, no. It's yeah. a, it's a uh, it's a city BRA municipal, um, and that's a similar project. function in every city or town across the Commonwealth. We don't we don't get we not involved with that. Yeah. Aaron, what I could do is, uh, or I'm on the advisory committee. We stop at Christmas Columbus Park and working down Atlantic Cab all the way down the other end, and I can't see why where the walkway <coughs> to the sea continues on now up to uh, up to Shuttle Drive and beyond. I can't see why we can't go that route. And I'll talk to the BRA when I have that meeting once a month and see if, in fact, we can address this and see what the problem is. So did you say the Harbor Walk, I'm sorry? Yeah. Okay. The Harbor Walk goes all the way up there. Right. But we're stopping it from Columbus back all the way down the other end, all the way to Chinatown, the south end, and even out to uh, New Mass. So why to concentrate on that side because of the harbor, I'm not sure. I can bring it up and see if in fact we can address this section too. I was just going to ask if Council Latino was invited like, to this meeting because I feel like we have a lot of city issues and I feel like we had all three of you who were kind of. Like, he was invited um, as you know the councilor is a regular at, at uh, neighborhood council and newer meetings. Um, so I think he. Yeah, we, 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 we wanted to do this together because we're both, I mean, we're the two representatives in the legislature. We, we, we get, I expect that a lot when we do these, but we want to try to, you know, have a conversation with issues that are more within our bailiwick, right? And so if Sal came, he would, he would have dominated the conversation, right? <laughs> so we want to try to talk about some different issues. And oh. we've gotten some good questions about some, you know, different issues that we deal with in the legislative process. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but we stay in touch with the local issues because we work with Sal, and you know we try to be as helpful as we can on the on the municipal issues. Uh, on the municipal issues and the local issues, and I mean, like I'm I'm regularly involved in discussions, and, and you know, some I mean, my hands are sometimes tied because it's not a state issue versus versus a city issue. Where I'm in the state issue, I'd have a little more uh, ability to, to 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 weigh some 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 say. Uh, but I will. It's funny that you go. I go to. I go talk to other other reps, and he probably talks talks to other senators, and we talk about issues that we deal with. And I sometimes bring up the fact that I have to go talk about a liquor license being, you know, fighting fighting keeping a liquor license open past past midnight. And people are like, "What are you doing? Why are you arguing in the middle of that argument?" And I said, "Well, that's that goes with my territory in terms of my dis discussion. That's what people want to hear me talk about in some in some ways is is keeping you know licenses only open to a certain amount of time." Um, so each district's different, so each everything is different. But but the uh, the local issues do come in hand, do come and play a lot for local you know city elected officials, even if they're not in the city. They're working, you know, they're they're actually representatives of the state. And uh, representative, just to follow up, I remember going to a hearing for mass vote for the pre-registration for the 16 and 17 year olds. So the house passed the bill. You said I think correct. Last, last legislative, legislative session, yeah. Legislative session, right? So. Did it just get shut down? It, it did not. Senate? It did not make it over to the Senate. Uh, no, it made it over to the Senate. I made it, it over to the Senate. Left the Senate. Never left the Senate. Excuse and me. I support it. Yes, I'm, he does. I'm a former chair of election laws. Actually, the audit, the random audit provision, uh, is a provision that I uh, filed in my own bill for as well. So, uh, yeah, it just it ran into a little bit of a hiccup in the Senate. Yeah. We're 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 working on it. You know, yeah. So yeah, we're taking a second crack at it here, and and uh, you know, we're trying to figure out what's the. What's the best bill that both 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 uh, chambers can agree on and move forward? Yeah, a lot in, in different municipalities across the Commonwealth. Some of the clerks, you know, the town clerks association, uh, they're not too in love with having to do some of the provisions in the bill, in particular the random audit provision. 
Uh, and uh, while you know we don't see any kind of signals of any kind of you know vote tampering, you know I, I watched when I uh, worked on this a number of years ago. I watched a documentary on HBO, Hacking Democracy, it was called. It was on the heels of the uh, Kerry Bush election, and you know from a technological standpoint. Uh, thank you. Thank you. From the, hey, Jeff, how are you? From a, from a technological standpoint, it was pretty scary uh, that uh, very easily, without anyone knowing, you could tamper with uh, you know an optical scan machine, which is what we use for our voting uh, practices in Massachusetts. Uh, you could you could change the, the programming of it to actually uh, disrupt what people's votes actually were, right? And so. Uh, it was pretty scary uh, documentary, so that's why I, I worked with Massville Common Cause and some others, uh, uh, League of Women Voters, to file a random audit uh, provision of election reform. I think it's I think it's worth doing, um, but there's a, there's a lot of other municipal officials that that don't think it's needed and would maybe cost them more uh, work and maybe cost them more resources uh, that they can't afford. And so there's a you know there's a healthy debate over it. I actually liked it because of the fact that we rely on such on we rely on technology now to a lot of things, including the machines that we, we put our, our ballots into. Uh, and basically, we press a button now, and, a, and the thing spits out numbers and it tells us who won, who lost, and you know what place they finished in. And uh, I, I liked it for the fact that you know machines aren't always 100% correct, as we know. Technology isn't perfect, so I liked it that you know we should just be double checking every you know randomly double checking whether these numbers that the machine is spitting out are, are the right numbers and if they're accurate. Uh, because even though it is a little more work for the yeah. clerks and it's a little more work uh, for the Secretary of State, it also is um, you know, better to be, be, be certain than to take it, you know, just leave it to chance or leave it to guessing. Uh, and if there was something wrong, uh, then we would know to you know to try to fix it, and I think that, that was the that was the essence of the audit. And I, I think yeah. um, it, in reality, it was it was something that we, we should continue to push forward. Uh, but again, you know this is you know the, the, to put a reform package together of this magnitude, and it was a pretty it was a pretty substantial bill uh, to be able to get it to be able to get it completely done. It doesn't always happen on the first first try, and so that's why we're we're, we're it takes more than one at bat to get ahead. I, I always steal right. that line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Other than that, the Red Sox, right? <laughs> other than what we discussed for Phil's and stuff, do you guys have any plans to sponsor or co-sponsor or initiate any new bills in the next year or so? No, we got. I mean, we're in the middle of the legislative session right now, and so our bill filing that we did was okay. um, was, the beginning was of almost year. a year ago. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we both have dozens of bills. I mean, we do. There are there are late files that happen. Uh, all the time, and, and depends on what hat depends on you know the circumstances of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but traditionally, we try you try to get most of your bills filed before the filing deadline, which is sometime in January. So it, I mean, it, it just passed for the for the two year session. But uh, you know, I mean, it, it, every two years, you know, if if you get reelected, then every two years you get you get the opportunity to come back and and file uh, you know some different bills or, or you know change some maybe maybe you, maybe you don't you lost interest in, in one issue and you want to focus focus your attention or your resources on another issue and it gives you that opportunity so I always say like as we get you know towards the second half of the session whatever whatever bills or issues you think that you know we should be we should be paying attention to by all means you know we ask that you, that you uh, you let us know and we can potentially uh, file it I did want to acknowledge uh, uh, City Council at large candidate and my good friend Jeff Ross who's here tonight uh, who came just came by? So, Aaron, are you yeah. saying that in order to do anything like the community center for the North End, it has to go through Sal because he's in charge of the city? Or is this like what can we do to get this going? Like some <coughs> something in the North End for well, the community we, for the elderly and, and we try. I mean, our predecessors and 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 in turn both us as when we took both took office uh, pushed very hard. For a YMCA to be built on parcel six of the Greenway, mm -hmm. um, and it was something that we we, we even allocated uh, sixteen million dollars in state funding to help them build uh, that uh, you know the the, the decking the, deck, the yeah. decking of that off ramp to build a, a, a YMCA. Um, as time went on, it became harder and harder. It became clearer and clearer that that the YMCA, being a nonprofit, being a five hundred one c three, 
could not afford to build the type of project that need, that was necessary along that along that uh, along that corridor. For instance, you know the YMCA builds buildings, and I, I didn't know this going into it or when I first started working on this. They build buildings that are typically like five million to seven million dollars. The building to to actually build on top of this piece of property or piece of land, it's like fifty million dollars, and they just don't have the fund. They didn't have the the, the fundraising resources to to be able to make that happen. Um, it, it, it's it's I, I agree with you. I mean, trying to have a, a larger community center or a better community center um, is is always on my mind. Uh, whether it's you know upstairs in the gym where you can't take a three pointer from the corner because it's cut out because the doors are cut out over there. You, I mean versus you know, other other necessities that we need. Uh, we I wish we had more space. I mean that's that's one of the issues that you that you deal with. But living in, in a in a small congested neighborhood. I mean we are one basically one square mile and. We, we squeeze every every little inch out of this neighborhood we possibly can, whether it's through you know uh, uh, residential businesses, uh, you know uh, open space, you know community space. I mean, we try to squeeze as much as we can, but um, you know the, the the neighborhood changed over the year. You know the neighborhood changed over the years, and certain things you know like the CC Center, which you know I grew up playing at the CC Center all my life, you know uh, as a kid. You know that's no longer there. And some of that was in, in, in essence because of the fact that there wasn't as many kids around. So it didn't become a priority uh, you know, uh, to, to, many, uh, to everyone because there wasn't as many kids as, as time went on. I think that kind of tide has kind of changed and is going in a different direction now. And it shows where we just expanded the Elliott School or, or you know, we're expanding the Elliott School. So I think as, the, as that tone changes or that tide changes, um, we'll start to see potentially more community space Developed, at, you know, but it, it, all, it all it all is all it's all timing depending on what's available and what, what happens. What about like this building itself? Why isn't there any more programs that go on in this building itself? Isn't this part of the city? Well, I hate this the, building. I, I would hate I hate to punt on that issue, but that is I mean that that is more of a, a more of a city issue in terms of in terms of how it, you know the Nazaro Center is operated. Right. Um, but you know, yeah, I, I use the Nazaro. Allowed to come in here two days a week. The, you know what I mean? The kids have to leave by a certain time. The doors are locked, so the, basically they hang in the street. And I know I grew up in the street. It doesn't matter. But I also had uh, not been at school where I went every night until eleven o'clock. So I really wasn't in the street. But over here, they just don't. You know, you have. They can stay open, but they choose not to. Well, I will say this: last last winter, me and Matthew and Bagamo, you know, my dear friend, uh, we decided we wanted to try to open up. Uh, the Nazaro on Saturday nights, once a month, and uh, once or twice a month, and get it staffed. Uh, you know, we had to we had to pay Clark ourselves to make sure that it stayed open. I don't know. Yeah, it was Clark then because Clark's left since, but uh, because it is, you know, he he has to pay. He has to have someone that actually works here uh, mm -hmm. doing it. And Carl was very receptive to it as long as we paid Clark. Um, and but you know, the challenge was we tried to do it, and we, we did it a couple times. We were successful, but some some weeks. You know, we couldn't get anybody to, 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 to help us, and we and on top of it, sometimes we couldn't even get the kids to stay, uh, and so it was it was it was it was it was challenging to say the least. But I think that you know, if 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 the right approach is taken in terms of in terms of the Nazaro Center, they are sometimes receptive to try to keep it open longer. And I think last last winter was was a was an example of that. You got past the nine mark coming up, right? The goods and the state's still own there. Why can't the community? an exception on that if they want to build on it that they have to do something not like a YMCA huge stable pool but maybe a community center there so you mean like a city city of Boston no, we can shake them down you guys can <laughs> where exactly and is parcel 9 parcel 9 is parcel 9's on on Blackstone Street uh, oh, right after the Greenway where the push carts are uh, which I think, yeah, it was designated to to be a hotel. Yes. Um, and I forget what else is is I'm part of that project. The, but they're gonna put the pushcarts. They're gonna put the push in the first floor or ground floor is gonna be part of the pushcarts. You know, there was no there was no um, no nonprofit entity, no city no city entity that actually you know wanted to build on that site or, or you know when the RFP was out, you know made a proposal to build on that site. Except for the museum project, we're talking about nonprofits. The museum project was they the only moved. thing that actually, came. and and, and, and many and many people, including myself, did not believe the museum project could could raise the money and, and build that build that. Well, it's a great idea, Especially just couldn't just well. didn't have the resources to do it. I mean, it's it's so it's trying to find. I, I still have hope that one day you know Parcel Six will be something of a community uh, outlet. I don't know what it would be, but I'd hope it'd be a community outlet because I don't want to see housing there. 
Uh, because just as we talked about, there's 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 enough. Why, there's enough why does it have to be the YMCA? Why can't the city or the state itself build a community center there? It's and, funding. And it's funding, and the, and and the state and the reason why I, I don't the, the reason why uh, the projects that got to the kind of the finals of that of that parcel nine incident were, were were the finals is because they were they were ready to put down a, a large financial. You know, offer to, to buy to buy the land, and the state, as we all know, is crying out for as much revenue as possible. It needs to it needs to maximize its its ability to make profit off off of those land off of those types of parcels of land. So this way that you know they don't have to keep coming back to us and asking us to, to potentially raise taxes, which no one wants to you know no one wants to take that to do that or move forward like that. So. I don't know. That's Your point is well taken. Though. Yes. Yeah. The point on the community just, center need is very no way to go. It's well taken. Whenever you have to do something, you have to go to different towns. And when you go to those different towns and you see what they have, it's just, it's, 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 it's I feel bad that our community doesn't have that. But don't, don't the community grant money? Weren't they in the old days? We should have grant money. Community grant money, and that's how they built all those things. That was all federal government stuff. Yeah. Different, little different time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any James, other questions? James we'll stick James around. Yeah, we'll yeah. Stick, I'll stick around. But thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 Th